loftier than others, but they always give us something to hang on to, especially when times are tough. And occasionally dreams mean even more. The difference between dealing with the most serious challenge and perhaps giving up. Recently, we met one such person, a man who, as Craig Dimchek shows us in tonight's cover story, is making strides. Another marathon day at the Dundalk Marine Terminal. What's, uh, what's going on with the ship? Any problem getting her in? Especially for Tony Baccini, a right. supervisor for a cargo handling company. It takes me 50% more of my body energy to do anything. He once worked on these docks and inside these ships. This is the identical twin to the ship, and it's sitting at the exact same place where I took a fall back in uh, October of 94. He slipped on a chain, falling on his left knee. First, Tony was diagnosed with torn cartilage, then arthritis, but the pain wouldn't go away. Extremely difficult. Six it's months all... later, he found out what was really wrong, cancer. Um, the doctors came out and told me, uh, you're gonna lose your leg or you're gonna die. And of course, you look down at your body parts and you don't think, you, don't, you can't see yourself losing your leg or a part of your body. I was horrified. In one part of his mind, he thought about this, whether he would ever again play the sport he loves, softball. His last season was one of his best. That was the summer of my life, I keep telling everybody. Uh, batted 800 all year long, and uh, we won it. I went nine for 10 in a three-game championship series. Now, three years later, and with only one leg, he's still swinging. Maybe a lunch hour, he comes to this batting cage to take his cuts. Well, you're tagging them pretty good. Thanks, I tried. Like today. Well, that was a shot. Tony usually draws a curious spectator. Missed it. They said there was a young man back here with one leg. I want to see what he was doing. He's doing a lot better than I would have pictured or imagined. It's just like he's got two legs. This is titanium. Uh, the knee's aluminum aluminum and uh, the foot is made out of carbon epoxy. I'm tired of umpiring and coaching. I'm gonna go out there, pitch or play first base or wherever a team will have me. There's no denying Tony's heart, but to be able to compete at his former level, he has to be able to run. And for an above the knee amputee, that would be a grand slam all by itself. got to be relaxing. So you take a nice deep breath, you get right here. A recent Saturday at Essex Community College. You should not be sweating. <laughs> okay, if you're, sweat, if you're sweating when you're stretching. I'm in you're, trouble. You're doing so Tony is well. anything but relaxed. Oh, God, I've been waiting for this day for almost two years now. We're going to start with your prosthetic. He and dozens of fellow amputees are about to learn again how to run. Knowing that they're going to teach me. I've been so excited for the last week, I can't stand it, so. You squeeze the muscle, do the extension. The teachers are role models. <sighs> Take another deep breath, and then squeeze again. Paralympians, like four-time gold medalist Dennis Oler. This clinic makes all that pale. You know, you're taking someone, and you're physically changing their life. I have, oh, have three children. I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old that are here, and I need to be able to keep up with them. That's why I'm here, so. Hopefully my sister will bring them back in later and we can run together. That's it, Tony. Tony and the others have already done the hard part. Good job. Stretching expectations. You told me to do 10, I did 20. All right. They told you you were going to die. You decided not I to told do that. Them, no, I don't think so. <laughs> jumping onto his prosthesis. Now that determination is put to the test again. Good. Good. Much better. As he and the others take the biggest steps of their new life. That was the best one. That was good so far. Not bad, not bad. Okay, not bad so far. Just one at first, then more. Okay. Ready? Let him go. Okay, stop. Good. <laughs> A scene repeated throughout the afternoon. That's running. That's running, my friend. Each one a remarkable exercise in courage. The spirit may be willing, but sometimes not the equipment. Joe adjusted my knee and my foot, got it aligned better, so 
Maybe I'll do better this time trying to run. Just try to relax. While others make their first attempt, Tony keeps practicing. Squeaking again. Let's go. My knee's squeaking. You hear it? Mom couldn't be happier or more proud. Like it's, it's hanging up. I, I just right. don't, you know, it's just, I thank God he's still here with all he, what he went through. Boom. So that's what he wants. He wants to play ball again, so I got to give him, I got to give him a lot of credit. Uh-oh. Like life, this day means picking yourself up. My, my knee's dragging. I told you I fall well. <laughs> I never get hurt when I fall. And moving on. I know how to roll. On your mark. Get set. Go. <laughs> and remember Chuck, who just wanted to be able to run with his kids? <laughs> Guess what? Come on, CJ. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> One of many here making strides in life. Peter Pan, Peter Pan. What do you think? I'll be able to do it. You're fine. You'll do it. I'll I bet you'll it. do it. You've always accomplished everything you've tried. Yeah. I can ride a bike. I can do this. So look for Tony on a softball field near you very soon. That's all it takes. It's a little positive attitude. Craig Demchek, Fox 45 News at 10. Now, some of those who learned to run at that clinic say they now hope to share what they know with other amputees housing and habitat for humanity. That's great. Hundreds of amputees gather for an event that could change their lives forever. It's all part of the second annual Freedom Movement Clinic in Essex. In just 15 minutes, instructors use their special talents to show amputees there is life after accidents. The clinic is really designed to, to get amputees to learn how to exercise and, and to learn how to run again. Um, actually developed this clinic 10 years ago and we developed it because most amputees, one of the things they miss doing the most is not having the ability to run. The event was a huge success, bringing lots of smiles and lots of tears of joy.